Hey guys, this is me Rachit. Welcome to yet another video. This is the sixth episode of Rachit Challenges Gaurav, and today I have a problem on arrays. So the problem is basically there are n elements in the array, and and every element has a particular cost associated with it to remove it from the array. And what Gaurav needs to do is to minimize the overall budget of removing elements so that the array becomes balanced. So what do I mean by array is balanced? So an array is balanced when an array of size n has the maximum element occurring at least n by 2 times. For example, if we have an array 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, the n is 5 and the max is 3. The frequency of 3 over here is 3. So 3 is greater than 5 by 2 and this is why we will call it balanced. But let's say we were having something like this. So now in this case there are six elements and the max is only occurring one times whereas the max should occur at least n by two which is three times. So what Gaurav needs to do is remove some elements. Each element has some cost associated with it like this can have a cost of three, this can have 17, 9, 10 and so and on. So Gaurav has to minimize the overall cost and make the array balanced. Let's see how we do. Alright, so I need to make the array balanced which is stating that it needs the maximum number of elements n by 2 times. When a person talks about some extremes like maximum or minimum, the first thing that comes to my mind to solve the problem especially in an interview is just sort the array. You know what this does is it gives you a nice ordering although it has a particular cost. So I'll just mention that cost beforehand so that we know what's happening here. Uh, that is n log n where n is the size of the array and now I'm going to sort this array. So we have, uh, in fact it is sorted already. Uh, in terms of uh, the values uh, in the array. Okay, so I'm going to build the solution step by step and I'm going to start with the minimum. So 1 is my first maximum. If I just take these two elements 1 and 1 and the associated costs of 7 and 4, the cost of actually building this array is the sum cost of removing all of these elements. It's effectively removing all of these elements. So that will be uh, 11, 22, and then 33. I'm sorry, yeah, 33 is the cost of actually uh, building this array with one as maximum. So that is one solution. I'm going to note it down, 33. Now, what I could do is I could have three as my maximum. But if I add just one three, does it make sense for me to ever add just one three? And the answer to that is no. If I add one three, I can definitely add another three. And even if I have, let's say five or six threes, it doesn't really matter. I'm saving costs. The costs are non-negative, so I'm saving costs and I should add as many threes as I can. So you're seeing that each element is actually part of a group. So uh, because of this group behavior, what we can do is we can treat each element as a group. So I'm going to take the cumulative cost of removing elements uh, based on the value that they have. So for 1 the cost of removing is equal to 7 plus 4 which is 11. For 3 the cost of removing is equal to 11 plus 8 which is 19. And for 4 we have the cost of removal as 14. Alright so now they have all got their group behaviors. I'm sorry this 3 was feeling left out. Now now, the, uh, I mean, we are thinking about in terms of group costs and one obvious uh, intuitive thing that you can do over here is to also pre-compute the cost of removals for all elements from an index i to the end of the array. Because you're we seeing that we are actually building it step by step. So we should have that pre-computed sum already. So uh, just writing it down, it will be 11, 14, we have 22, we have 24, we also have... 33 coming up to 37 and finally 44 so total cost of removal is 44 which we shouldn't do uh, and the cost of removal uh, at this point is like we said 33 okay now let's add 3 as a potential maximum with 3 as a potential maximum do we have any issues with the remaining of the array and the answer to that is no because 3 has a frequency of 3 1 1 works we are good to go. So the cost of removal for the two remaining fours is 14. Okay, I'm going to note that down. Okay. 
Now comes the point of 4. When I add 4, I actually see that there's an issue. There's just two of these elements and in this remaining array, which is not the maximum, I need to remove 5 out of the 5 elements, I need to make it of size 2. So I need to remove 5 minus 2 elements, which is I need to remove 3 elements from this array. Alright, and you know, manually I can do this uh, by myself. I can say that I'm going to remove the cheapest elements. So uh, in these five elements, what are the cheapest ones? This is cheap two, this is cheap four, and finally the third cheapest will be seven. So I have 11 plus two, which is 13. So the cost of removal will be 13 if I take four as my maximum. And that gives me the minimum area. However, there's a problem. I can't do this efficiently. Uh, if I if I do it in the brute force way, then for every maximum that I take, the maximum, I mean the number of distinct elements at most is n. And for each element maximum, I will need to traverse this array, find the minimum k elements to remove, and that would take me n time. So the overall complexity would be order n square plus n log n, but we can ignore that. So this is the overall time complexity. Correct. So over here we have the solution, everything is nearly there, but the problem uh, is that we need to have an efficient data structure to find these smallest k elements for any given maximum. And if we can find an efficient data structure, what we are looking for is n log n is the minimum time complexity of this problem. So if for every element n, which is in total n, we can find the k minimum elements in log n time, then we are good to go. All right, and your mind might be buzzing with stuff like segment trees and uh, you know cumulative data structures actually range queries uh, and that is one way to go about this but it is quite complicated also so what we will try to do is we'll try to find a simpler solution which still works all right so now let's go through this in the data structure way what are the things that we need in our data structure the first thing is we should be able to add elements to it because every time we are taking a maximum and we're going to the next maximum, all the elements in this current maximum, let us say we were at three and we went to four. So all the threes have to be added into the remaining array. So that is adding elements. That is the first operation that it should perform and it should perform it efficiently. The second thing we need to do is to remove the first K elements. So the K smallest in terms of their costs. So first K in terms of their cost elements and also get the cumulative cost of the first K elements. All right. So we also want to do a get along with the remove. So this is a complicated operation. We are doing a get plus remove. We are returning not just the cost, but we are also actually performing, uh, you know, data manipulation kind of thing over there. Uh, these two, if we are able to do these two things, we are good to go. Uh, and, you know, in fact, I should make it easier. I can separate this out into a simple function of get the first k element cost and remove first k elements. All right. If these three things work, we win. Let's start with the simplest data structure we can think about and that is a set. Okay, now we are initially adding elements so we add one and one. Every time we are adding elements it has to be sorted according to cost. So these two elements will be in this fashion. The cost is 7, 4 in original array but it will be added as 4 and 7. Now let's go for 3, 3, 3. If we are adding 3, 3, 3, the costs are 9, 2 and 8 which means that there needs to be some sorting done over here. So it'll be nine, I'm sorry, it'll be eight, nine, and this three is very cheap. So it has to be pushed in the front. Three, two, we have one and one over here with their costs of four and seven. Now you're just seeing that this array is sorted. And when four and four come in, they're going to pop into the right places, which is four will come in here with a cost of three, and four will come over here with cost of 11. At the end of the day, this is how the set will look like. So let's take this example to understand that in a deeper way. You're seeing that initially we're going to take one as the maximum. All right. And that these five ones that we have. So this is in your set, you have basically five ones in the sorted order, as we said. Now three comes in, three has a frequency of one, which means that the frequency of these elements, the remaining array has to be at most one. So the remaining array basically has to be of size one for three to keep the array balanced. Let's remove these guys. 
we are going to remove of course the cheapest elements so we are going to remove one 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 uh, and any other element yeah we have to we are forced to remove one two so the cost of removal till now uh, is four and five but that doesn't really matter what we'll see is we have a general algorithm to take care of this so yeah what we have is uh, three with the frequency of one and one with frequency of one this is our current array now let's take four into consideration with four into consideration what we are doing is we have a frequency of four and we have the opportunity of increasing the elements over here what this means is that we can undo some of the removals we had in the array to save on cost uh, now when you're undoing when you're removing elements you want to remove the cheapest ones when you're getting back elements you want the most expensive ones it's the reverse operation right so in this case uh, the frequency of this is four uh, and the total strength over here is just two so I have a difference of two over here I can add two elements so I'm going to add the most expensive ones two and forced to add one so this is how it's going to go there's going to be additions which will happen in log in time over here I'm assuming some sort of a height balance binary search tree the removals are also in log in time and you know the get first k is in k log in time removes are also always k so that is k log in all right so now let's take this step by step when 4 came in you saw that there are some additions how many additions can you have in total 4 has a frequency of 4 and the maximum number of elements you can have in this array in the remaining array basically apart from 4 is of course 4 because the frequency of 4 has to be greater than n by 2 greater than or equal to so you could have added at most four elements when this element came in all right so frequency of four was the maximum number of elements you could add when three came in the maximum number of elements you could have possibly added was the frequency of three similarly when one came in the maximum number of elements you can add in the remaining array in this case it was the null set but i'm just taking a general case was the frequency of one and if there are further elements then again the maximum number of elements you can add is always the frequency of that element because you know you can't add more elements than the current frequency because otherwise you will have the array imbalanced all right this is a very important consideration because what this means is that the total number of additions you can have is the sum of the frequencies of all the elements which is the number of elements in the array all right some of the frequencies this is frequency 4 frequency 2 frequency uh, of this is 5 so these are the total number of elements in the array this is just 11 and you have 11 elements in the array so what we have now is that total number of elements in the array which is n into cost of addition which is log n so the total cost of additions through the entire array is going to be n log n now we are doing well we are doing well the only problem of course here is that the removals and the gets are k together so it seems like it's going to be very expensive but there's a very intelligent technique over here that you can use and that is the concept of flow you know you can remove only so many elements as you can add I mean, initially this as we said this set is empty so the total number of elements that this set can hold at any given point of time is n but also the total number of additions you're ever doing into this set is n so the total number of removals you'll have is also n and the cost of these removals uh, I mean the total number is is log n so when you take this asymptotically what you're getting is n log n plus n log n plus the cost of sorting which is n log n so wait for it <laughs> the maximum time complexity is n log n for the total array and we have solved this problem in n log n time
so guys um this problem was like really very very difficult for us also to uh, solve first and then explain explaining it was like way too hard and you have no idea how many retakes it took <laughs> but uh, what i want to say is we were easily able to prove that uh, the number of insertions can be at max n so but if you look at it in the complete journey we are at most adding n elements right so if you are looking at the removal stuff also if you are not putting more than n elements in throughout the journey so you cannot remove more than n elements in throughout the journey and this is what amortized means yeah i think the i think the key word over here is amortized and uh, yeah the and spelling, we don't the spelling, the spelling is this uh, um <laughs> i think this is the spelling I'm, i'm quite sure it is but also another thing that is the concept of flow so uh, in fact rachit was the one who came up with the flow concept and uh, i thought about the amortized uh, additions so it took a collective effort and it's uh, it's actually a complicated problem in an interview because it's not very intuitive the first time you think right. about this it's not like you you come up with okay right. this is going to be amortized okay and also i can prove the amortization using flow so this is a difficult problem it might take you time some time to understand Absolutely. it yeah yeah it, it will take you some time to absorb what's going on but yeah the key learning that i want uh, the key learning that we want you to take is understand what is the concept this amortized time complexity and how you can basically think of flow to get a better to get a better picture of how this is working all right then uh, so guys this is the end of the sixth episode for uh, rachit challenges gorav and i hope you liked it i hope you like the video share subscribe everything that you do normally if you like this video you know what you have to do you have to like share and subscribe to our channels guys see ya bye zero then it's growing 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 then maybe we had to remove some elements then it was growing 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 and so on and on but if you look at it in amortized kya bolte hain amortized amortized but if you look at it <laughs> good data structure bhai kya example set hua hai ha bahut sahi hai बहुत ही सही है तो कर भगवान पर भरोसा रखो और राइट लेट्स टेक दिस एग्जांपल टू गेट अ बेटर लेट्स टेक दिस एग्जांपल लेट्स टेक दिस एग्जांपल टू अंडरस्टैंड Computer must be in my jeans. I got a laptop in my back pocket. My pinnacle walk when I hack cock. I got a fat knock from that rap profit. Made a living and a killing off it.